الحمد لله الحمد لله قد عم الخلائق رأفة وحنانا سبحانه تجري الرياح بأمره فتنبت الأرض أشجارا وأغصانا وبحار بطري اللحم زاخرة وأخرى تفيض عذبا لسقيانا وشمس تجود بالدفء ما بقيت الدنيا وما بخلت كرونا وأزمانا خلقنا من منية خلقت فكانت الأرحام مأوانا غدينا من غير جهد ومسألة فتكامل الخلق صورا وألوانا نحب وعين الله تكلؤنا والأب يسعى والأم ترعانا حتى إذا القوى فينا قد اكتملت كثرت معاصينا وعظمت خطايانا نسينا كيف كان منشأنا فكيف نسهو عن الذي بفضله أبقانا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في سلطانه ولا مناوئ له في عزته وجبروته وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله محمد صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فحياكم الله وبياكم وأبقاكم عوامل عز لهذه الأمة وحياكم وحيا الحياة منكم إذ انجلى وجوها أسأل الله العلي العظيم أن يجمعنا في مستقر رحمته وتحت لواء محبته وأن يجمعنا بنبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أيها الإخوة الكرام لا شك أن أمتنا لعهد قريب في شتات أمة مطعونة في الظهر أقصى الطعنات بعضها يحتمل الهم وجل في سبات هدف لكل رام غرض لكل طاع أحزانها عويل وبكاء وأفراحها تصدية ومكاء اهتبل العدو غيبتها فنفض عيبتها وأهان شيبتها وحارب قوتها كل ذلك عبر وسائل خسيسة قذرة تدمر الأخلاق فتذرها أشلاء مبعثرة سرنا في زمن اللهو واللعب سرنا في زمن فيه النفاق علامة ومندوحة سرنا في زمن كثر فيه الطغاة والأرازل والشرادم وتصدر فيه السفهاء والبلهاء سرنا في زمن ترجلت فيه بعض النساء ولهجن فيه بالتحرير بعقول أرق من قطمير فإذا ما نسعتها الزنابير صاحت رفقا بالقوارير سرنا في زمن ما أحوجنا فيه إلى قول الله تعالى واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا 
واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها My brothers and sisters in Islam we came to a certain time that you have the Muslim Ummah in large got divided and lots of enemies from everywhere wanted to snatch wanted to divide wanted to cut to cut this Ummah into pieces and we were actually we are in a certain situation that we need to go back to the word of Allah to see in this critical time what is the message of Allah to this ummah in large and let me take you all and invite you all to the book of Allah to our guidance to our curriculum to the divine word of Allah let me invite you to go directly to the chapter number three, to the verse number 103, where Allah is calling all of us, regardless of our skin color, regardless of our background, regardless of our political views. And that ayah, actually needs a person who is sound-minded, who has the clear thought, and it doesn't need to be an expert, it doesn't need to be an imam, it doesn't need to be a knowledgeable person to pick up the message of Allah. Allah said in the Quran, Surah Ali Imran, Allah said, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا Hold on tight بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا To the rope of Allah collectively not alone not individually hold on tight to the rope of Allah and do not get divided do not be split. Do not despair of one another. And Allah said, and remember the favor of Allah when you were enemies, when you were divided, and only by the grace of Allah you became united. You became one body. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the metaphorical expression in the Quran about the rope of Allah. What does it mean? What is the rope of Allah? He gave a very clear answer. He said, it is the Quran. It is the Quran. Al Quran is the rope of Allah which extended from the sky to the earth. We as Ummah, we as community, we need to pay attention to that verse. This verse has to be in front of our eyes, especially this time and the days to come. Allah said, do not be divided. And we need to understand the nature of our religion. You do not worship Allah alone by yourself. The best time for salah is to pray on time in jama'ah. In 
jama'ah. And I believe that the calamity that we are witnessing nowadays is not that the enemies had gathered together against the Muslim Ummah as some people try to picture this. I see more calamity has more effective outcomes in our Ummah nowadays. And let me explain and let me be fair. How come that we ask others to be merciful, to be kind, to be peaceful towards us while we as Ummah are not united? How come we ask others who didn't believe in the Quran to abide by the manners of Islam while we as Ummah, as sometimes communities are not stick to our religion as we should be? And the clear example that no one could debate or argue about is the example of Salatul Fajri. If you wanted to see the reality of the Muslim Ummah nowadays, look at the Masajid by the time of Salatul Fajr and by the time of Jumu'ah and you will see the difference. You will get the glimpse of how Muslims understood their religion. Allah said, hold on collectively to the robe of Allah. Till today, we have Muslims think that religion is to pray five times a day and that's it. You know what is the first command to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in al Madinah? The first command was, O oh people, feed, feed the hunger, spread peace, pray at night, Come together as one family. Whenever you invite the community for something to come together, they start thinking individually. And you know the hadith of Rasulullah about the sheep. When it is alone, then it would be easy for the wolf to eat the sheep. They started to cut our ummah into pieces. And now they are hunting the pieces. And still, you have some Muslims wanting to get outlet of their views. Oh, you know what? They are far away from us. It is just Gaza. It is just Palestine. It is just Lebanon. No, 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 no. There are some group of people are causing troubles to the Ummah. If we got rid of them, we will get the peace. Foolish. Foolish way of thinking. I swear by Allah, it is just cutting the ummah into pieces. And the only solution starts from the masajid, starts from the mentality of the Muslims. Do 
cannot divide your community and start from the beginning. Do not cut your family into parts. Have this mentality. I will keep the family safe. I will have the ties of the kinship safe. I will connect myself to my brothers and sisters in the masjid. I will participate in everything. I will go to jama'ah because I wanted to be united. And you can ask, what is the first thing that Rasulullah have done when he migrated to Medina? He built the masjid without the community being together in all the salawat, in the Jumu'ah, in the events, being together as one family, as one connected body, the community is zero. This is the reality. So how come you want the Ummah to come together while we failed to come together as one family? And if you do not believe me, if you think I'm kind of exaggerating, you will discover this in our weddings, in our events. So if it is a wedding related to some people from a certain nationality, they only invite their own people, our own jama'a, our own people of homeland, our own people who speak the same language. So what about the rest? Aren't they your brothers and sisters? And moreover, and I will not get bored of reminding myself and reminding you as well of that fact, that the enemies of Islam for years and years had spent millions of dollars to divide our ummah based on madhab, based on jama'ah, based on some fit he rules to the point that nowadays we have these names, Salafis, Sufis, Wahhabis, Ash'aris, Hanafis, Shafi'is. That's madness. That is insane. We need to wake up. Because if they wanted to hunt, they would not show mercy to the Sunnis or Shi'is or Shafi'is or Hanbalis or Hanafis. They will eat us all. It's a fact. Hold on tight to the rope of Allah. If a person in Somalia, in South Africa, in Gaza is bleeding, it is the same pain, it is the same agony. We are all one body. Rasulullah, he built the masjid. What is number two? He established the treaty of the brotherhood. Those who migrated from Mecca with those the supporters of Medina. And he made them brothers. He made them one family. He made the sisters from 
that Meccan people, sisters with those who are in Al Medina, the brother who speaks a language different than English, and the brother in Saudi Arabia, the same brother of Lebanon, the same brother from India, the same brother from the United States, the same brother from Canada, the same one from China, they are all one. Be aware, before you put something on the social media that might increase that division, please stop. Before you utter any word to increase that division, please stop. If you will raise an issue about the fit, and you know it will increase the division in the masjid, don't increase the division. Don't bring it on the table. If you have a political view, that will increase the division in the Ummah. Don't open your mouth. We have the hadith of Rasulullah. فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Say good or keep quiet. My brothers and sisters in Islam, what Allah had given me is only to talk to you. And I hope if my message could reach to, to the two billion Muslims. But believe me, it is not the time for the division, it is the time of unity. Even if you have an issue, it's not the time now. Even if you feel that you want to ask one of the questions about your own mother. Keep it for now. This is the time that we come together. By the time of the hurricane, we found people, and they are not Muslim, coming together, collecting food, packing the stuff, staying on the road to give people. And my question was, where are the Muslims? Where are the Muslims? From the house of Allah. From asking about their brothers and sisters who got affected by the hurricane. We need a wake-up call. You are not living only by yourself. We have many things to share. If I am here in the Qibla, reciting Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you are in your office saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Another sister in her house saying Malik Yawm din We are one on the house of Allah. Bring your wife, bring your children, bring your family to the house. We need to feel that kind of brotherhood. May Allah bring us together as united Ummah. May Allah shower all of us with His mercy. Allahumma ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah. الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى My brothers and sisters in Islam just for the sake of the time I wanted to confirm that point that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم one of his priorities that he wanted to bring people together no matter what even if there was a problem, he sallallahu alayhi wa was so concerned 
about bringing people together as not to increase or to make any division in the Ummah. And let me tell you that story. In the battle of Hanayn, after the battle of Hanayn, and because of many of the new Muslims who came from Mecca to participate in the battle, Rasulullah found that the Muslims after the battle have lots of spoils, has lots of ghanaim, has lots of leftover stuff. So he gathered all those things and he gave it all to the new Muslims of Mecca. However, that the people of Medina who participated at the same battle, he didn't give them anything, sallallahu alayhi wa So they came up to the conclusion that you know what? The migration is over. And now Rasulullah resorted to the people of Mecca. And now he is saying goodbye to Medina. And he will leave us and he will go back to, Me to Mecca. And the rumors, even the young people of the Ansar started to talk in the masjid. And that could lead to the division in the Ummah at that time. Rasulullah called Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, the chief of Al Ansar. And he said, Oh Sa'd, what, what that statement that I heard? He said, Ya Rasulullah, my people are so sad. They didn't take any of these spoils and they think that you will leave us. So he said, bring all of the Ansar together in one tent and do not bring anyone other than the Ansar. They came, all of them. And Rasulullah wanted to stop this cycle of fitna in the community. And he said to Al-Ansar, what's going on? No one responded out of shyness, out of adab with Rasulullah. So he said, O oh people of Al-Ansar, didn't you wear astray and through me Allah had guided you? Didn't you wear divided and enemies and through me Allah united you? They said, Bala, of course. And he said, you could respond with something else. You could say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you came to us belied and we supported you. You could say, you came to us humiliated and we supported you. You could say, you came to us poor and we gave you. They kept silent. And he said, if you said so, you would tell the truth. And I acknowledge. Then he said, O oh, people of Al-Ansar, those new Muslims, I wanted to give them, to show them that Islam in their side, that we could build, that we could enhance them their relationship with Allah and increase their Iman. And I have no doubt that you Al-Ansar have Iman. And I swear by Allah, if it wasn't the Hijrah, I would love to be one of the Ansar. Then he said that golden statement. He said, Ya Ma'shar Al-Ansar, Ama Tardawna, أن يذهب الناس بالشات والبعير وترجعون أنتم 
birihalikum He said, would you be happy if everyone from the Meccan people had went home, have some sheep, have some cattle, have some flowers, have some sugar, and you go back to your houses, and you have in your share, Rasulullah, means what? I didn't decide to go back to Mecca. I still will live amongst you, O Al Ansar. They all said in one time, Radina bi Rasulillahi ghanan ghanan wa maqsama. Radina bi Rasulillah. We are satisfied with Rasulullah to be our share. Everyone will take from the dunya, but our share is to have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah ended the fitna at the moment. Ended the fitna immediately. We want to take that example in our life. If your wife giving you a hard time and somebody is thinking of divorce, no, I will not do it not to cause division in my family. If the wife is thinking of filing for divorce, no, I will have patience. I will have sabr to keep my family united. You cannot imagine how many calls this week I got for wives thinking of filing for divorce. And I keep pushing them not to do it. Please, don't do this. Don't split the ummah. Don't cause division in the community. Keep the ummah united. Hold on tight, collectively, to the rope of Allah. My brothers and sisters, forgive me if I took some minutes extra. But I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our ummah and bring us together. Do not forget your ummah, your brothers and sisters everywhere. And if I wanted to just mention names, I could stay and make this khutbah even longer. All of our ummah with no exception. Make dua for them in your salah. And also, I wanted to remind you that inshallah we will have some of the nation will be collected for the families who got affected by the hurricane. Do not leave the message inshallah today unless you do kind of contribution. Even if it was little, but do not belittle any good deed that you are going to do. It will make the difference. Lots of people have, are suffering right now. They lost their appliances, their furniture. Some of them have lost their houses com completely. Some of them do not have even insurance. Some of them are struggling with applying with the organizations and they got anything yet. So we want to show that solidarity and unity as one family. Also with the food pantry, inshallah we will have it for October 19th for the family who are registered with us to take kind of support, to put food on the table, to do our part, to show Allah that we have goodness in our heart. May Allah bless you all. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana wa ishrafana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. اللهم انصر الإسلام واعز المسلمين اللهم وحد صفنا واجمع كلمتنا حببنا إلى بعضنا ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم انزع البغضاء من بيننا آمين يا رب العالمين My brothers and sisters before the salah do not forget your masjid from your sadaqah we have lots of expenses to cover inshallah it's our duty it's our obligation to support the house of Allah. 
May Allah keep us always united. Jazakumullah khairan wa aqimu salah. Kumu ila salatikum wa rahmatullah.